Elapsed time is the amount of time that passes from a start point to an end point. Calculating elapsed time is an important everyday skill. It's useful when cooking, taking a drive, catching a bus, or even watching a movie. In this video, we're going to use the timeline method for calculating elapsed time. If you'd like to also learn the T-chart method, see the link in the description below. We'll use the timeline method to solve three problems. Number one. Jess puts some food in the oven at 5.50 p.m. It needs to cook for one hour and 15 minutes. What time will it be ready? We start by drawing a timeline. We know the start time, 5.50 p.m. We don't know the finish time, but we do know the amount of time that has elapsed, one hour and 15 minutes. To work out the end time, we have to jump a total of one hour and 15 minutes along this timeline. Doing this in one jump is a bit tricky so instead we'll break it down into chunks of time that suit us. Let's start by jumping 10 minutes. That will bring us to exactly 6 o'clock. For each jump we make, we must record the elapsed time. Here it is 10 minutes. And what time we land at after the jump. In this case, 6 o'clock. We've already jumped 10 minutes, but we still need to jump 1 hour and 5 minutes. Jumping an hour from 6 o'clock will be easy. We'll land at 7 o'clock. We still have 5 minutes to add. 7 p.m. plus 5 minutes is 7.05 p.m. The food will be ready at 5 past 7. Number 2. Chris is taking a bus from London to Paris. It leaves London at 8.17 a.m and arrives in Paris at 3.40 p.m. How long does the trip take? We have the start time, 8.17 a.m., and we have the end time, 3.40 p.m. We need to calculate how much time has elapsed. In the previous problem, we had a set total time we had to jump. This time, we have to keep jumping along the timeline until we reach our end time. To make things easier, let's start by adding 3 minutes. 8.17 plus 3 minutes is 8.20. 8.20 is an easier time for us to work with. Again, we must record each jump and the time we land. To make it easier still, let's jump 40 minutes. This lands us at 9 o'clock. Now we can jump easily in multiples of an hour. 3 hours will take us to 12 p.m. 3 more hours takes us to 3 p.m. A final jump of 40 minutes lands us right on the end time, 3.40 p.m. Now, to calculate how much time has elapsed from the start to the end, we just have to add up our jumps. 3 minutes plus 40 minutes plus 3 hours plus 3 hours plus 40 minutes equals 7 hours and 23 minutes. The trip takes 7 hours and 23 minutes. Number 3. Brad wants to watch a movie. It goes for 1 hour and 32 minutes. He doesn't want to stay up too late, and so wants to finish the movie by 8.45pm. What time should he start the movie by? We know the elapsed time, 1 hour and 32 minutes, and the end time, 8.45 p.m. We must work out the start time. Notice in this problem, we'll be starting at the end of our timeline. We're going to be working backwards. That means we'll be subtracting time instead of adding. Again, jumping all of this in one go might be a bit tricky, so let's break our elapsed time into chunks. We'll start by subtracting one hour. 8.45 take away one hour is 7.45. As always, we must record the jump and the time at which we land. Now we're left with 32 minutes to subtract. We could do this in one jump, 
but I'm going to start with a jump of 30 minutes. This lands us at 7.15. Now a final jump of 2 minutes lands us at 7.13. Brad needs to start watching his movie by at least 7.13pm to be finished by 8.45pm. This is how we can use the timeline strategy to solve problems involving elapsed time. If you'd like to learn or practice the T-chart strategy, check out the link to the video in the description below. EasyTeaching.net 